uh, members of the gaming, uh, if you're in the house, please proceed. We'll start in about two minutes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, members and uh, the CCC and its uh, team. Um, before I set the rules, uh, I'd like the, we, the clerk to call the roll uh, for the House members. Clerk. Vice Speaker Lorenzo de Long Guerrero. So, yeah. Uh, Rep. Roman Beneventi? Like that. Rep. Ivan Blanco? Mm. Rep. Edwin, uh, Edwin Probst? Sorry. Present. Rep. Joseph Lee Pan Guerrero? Stick it up. Rep. Edmund Villagomez? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, all members of your gaming committee are present. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, with that, we do have a quorum. i uh, also like to recognize in the House side, uh, uh, Mr. Floor Leader, uh, Rep. John Posablon, and uh, Assistant uh, Minority Leader, uh, Rep. Tina Sablon. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, Senator, please uh, call your roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and on the Senate side, we have our legislative assistant, um, Alexis Hofschneider. Um, Alexis, can you please call the roll for the Senate members? Senator Vinny F. Sablon. Present. Senator Sixto K. Gisomar. Ilo. Senator Francisco M. Borja. Senator Francisco Q. Cruz. Here. Senator Jude U. Hofschneider. Senator Justo S. Quiroga. Senator Teresita A. Santos. Mr. Chairman, three members of the Senate Cannabis and Gaming Committee are present. Thank you, Lex, um, with three members present, and um, Senator Hofschneider um, uh, should be joining us shortly. We do constitute a quorum on the uh, Senate um, committee side. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator. Um, so before we begin, uh, we'd like to have the uh, CCC uh, present. I know they had a uh, meeting last week. Uh, unfortunately, not every member uh, was able to participate. Uh, the CCC did went on executive session, so we we're not able to listen in on what's uh, happened during that uh, executive session. And so uh, it's with uh, request the House and the Senate uh, ask uh, the chairman of CCC to update uh, 
the cinema uh, as to uh, what is the present state of the uh, casino uh, licensee here in the cinema. Um, there, there was some mention. Uh, well, last last week's meeting had uh, low-level uh, management that were answering on behalf of the casino, and that presents a concern with the uh, uh, this body, and that's how the meeting came about. Uh, and so, Mr. Chairman, you may proceed with your opening remarks. Good afternoon, to, uh, Mr. Chairman of both uh, committee from uh, both houses of the legislature. Uh, it's nice to see that um, both houses have emerged to, to address this issue of gaming. Um, I would recommend that perhaps uh, in the very near future, uh, it would be wise if we can do a uh, not necessarily an oversight, but uh, to re-examine the casino license agreement because perhaps the word casino may be kind of a misnomer because uh, a significant part of that agreement have nothing to do with gaming. This is an integrated resort with some gaming component built into it, a significant part. Maybe even more than 80% of it is construction of five-star hotels, uh, construction of convention centers, uh, entertainment team, water parks, and it has the potential to recruit, maybe to, to keep the five-star status, uh, it has the potential to recruit more than 12,000 uh, employees if they want to perform and, uh, and achieve that five-star quality. This involves uh, Department of Public Works, Building Code, Department of Labor, BECQ, zoning, fire department, uh, upon commerce, the list goes on. The casino uh, commission is focused on the gaming part uh, of that agreement. And we have realized and recognized the limitations that that law, Public Law 1856, has on CCC. And for over four years, we've come before this body asking for help to please examine the gaming laws and allow the commission to better uh, enforce the, the gaming laws. That particular bill has changed uh, from the 18, 19, 20, and that's 21, and is sitting before the House right now because the Senate recently passed its version. So I believe it's House Bill 21, that's 11, House Substitute 1, Senate Draft 3, and it was transmitted to the House by the Senate, I think since April 16, April 15 or so. Um, we are as anxious, the Commission is as anxious as, as uh, the legislature here. And in our last meeting, without having to, to divulge the specific uh, information on what transpired on the executive session, uh, we, we will address as much as we could address this morning or this afternoon uh, in reference to what your interests are because we really don't know what specific information was going to be asked. We were just told to update. Uh, but perhaps before I go any further, I have Mr. Charlie Atalik with us here. He is the acting executive director. We have our vice chairman for the commission, Mr. Rob Demapan. We also have our treasurer, Mr. Mario Titano. And I have uh, almost all of the division managers that are here with me. Uh, so that we can uh, basically share information as much as we could share. But the issue that was very urgent at the time that the, we met was the IPI's housing, uh, apart, uh, the, the barracks, the, the housing for the employees, the, the termination of the utilities, the power and water. And there were some discussions about payroll. We, we met. Um, and we listened to, to their staff. And then we met again uh, a day or yesterday or a day before with the Madam Chair and some of the other key staff of IPI. Uh, we have been informed that the parent company will transfer the necessary funds to make sure that the payroll coming up this Friday 
and hopefully every Friday the payroll is due <coughs> will be timely and that uh, and that uh, the CUC matters have been taken care of apparently all of the uh, housing provided by the company and the barracks provided by the company they have their water and power back already there was some discussions that IPI is going to change some of the arrangements that they have with the employees so that in addition to charging $100 per the housing, they are going to transfer the utility costs to the employees. Uh, our concern at that point is that make sure that whatever existing employment contract you have, which may include the housing privileges, are not violated. Uh, and that if you are going to transfer the utility, that uh, IPI handle all of the CUC requirement for deposits. And two, you are not going to let those employees handle the utility if they are on furlough. Um, and, and there are some other related issues uh, in reference to the, to the um, housing benefits uh, and the, the problem of paying. Uh, prior to our meeting, the CCC is very concerned regarding the financial situation of IPI. We have been very concerned with this matter. As you all know, Public Law 1856 requires that they be financially suitable. If you look at 1856, CCC's responsibility is to monitor. We have urgently asked you if you can enter the word enforce because our regulations really is limited uh, only what the law allows it to do. We got the enforcement from a different sections of, of the Commonwealth law to try to, to invoke. We have reached out to Public Works. We have even reached out to the Department of Labor. Yesterday we, we had a conference with uh, the Madam Secretary from Labor to try to determine how we can work together. This, in my opinion, is the largest single development that the CNMI or this part of the, uh, the world has ever seen. I'm not aware of any uh, project that requires a minimum of $2 billion and to construct 2,000 new hotel room of five-star quality anywhere, not even on Guam. So it, it requires that the CNMI approach this in, an, in a coordinated way so that it's not just CCC who's handling gaming. All of a sudden, now we are required to handle architecture and engineering, labor, fire permits, uh, and so forth. Uh, I was really surprised when I heard from the Secretary of Labor, for example, that she doesn't have any jurisdiction either if the organization has more than 150 employees. I said, so let's say, assuming for purpose of discussion, that, there is, that nobody, they did not get their pay and they're all lining up protesting. Who, who can we talk to to go down and help? I mean, labor can go down and see and investigate and, and then recommend. It, it, it's outside, they, they, not like the old days where they can actually participate in the drafting of the contract. They don't, it's, it's all outside of their hands. We talk about OSHA. I say, what about the safety? That's federal. They, they can only consult, they, they cannot enforce. Similar to the Title 31, the Bank Secrecy Act, that's a federal law. That's where your anti-money laundering provisions are, the requirement to file suspicious activity reports or the cash transaction reports. Those are federal law. Only federal officers can enforce it. CCC cannot enforce the Bank Secrecy Act. We only monitor, and we require IPI to be in compliance with those. So. I'm asking that uh, only recently we, we got a, a, I think Public Law 21, that's 27, to the good work of uh, Chairman Lee Pan, the CCC has been identified as a law enforcement agency. The problem is it's just as bad as Public Law 1924. We've been declared autonomous agency. But what does that mean? Nothing. Nobody knows. No, when we try to define it, it says, nope, doesn't allow. So now we're developing our, our policies on how to deal with law enforcement. 21 to 11, uh, House Substitute 1, Senate Draft uh, 3, is it, a little bit clearer than when we ask the House to please the, help us out and clarify what we need to do. Um, again, Mr. Chairman, this is a note we, we were addressing on the executive session. 
about the housing, uh, about the payroll. Uh, we have been informed yesterday that uh, those have been resolved and payroll uh, will be paid and will be paid on time. The commission had previously initiated um, regulatory changes. We didn't see it go through, but we are resurfacing it to require IPI to reserve three months' worth of payroll in reserve as a condition, as, as part of the CCC order. We're preparing that now. We're also looking at extending that order to the contractor and subcontractors providing labor and related services. Because quite a lot of the labor issues are not IPI employees. They are employees of contractors and subcontractors. But as we understand through the recent uh, uh, federal settlement agreement, where the federal court, in interpreting the Fair Labor Standards Act, I think took a position that even if you're not the employer, if it's your project, you somehow is also responsible for compliance of your subcontractor's uh, performance in reference to the Fair Labor Standards. IPI, as you know, was sanctioned, uh, I believe, over $3 million worth uh, as a settlement agreement. So we're looking now to extend that payroll requirement and reserve to even the subcontractors as a condition to securing a CCC license in an effort to jointly work together and protect the workers. Uh, again, not knowing exactly what the, com what the committee here wants to hear, but that was the gist of the executive session. There were some issues in reference to the legal counsel's uh, um, updating the commissions on pending matters that's affecting uh, the, that I'm not at liberty to, to discuss on, uh, in reference to what IPI and the ongoing litigations. Anything else, uh, Mr. Director, you want to add? Thank you, Chairman, and uh, of uh, both the House and Senate com uh, Gaming Committee. Uh, for the record, my name is Charlie Athletic. I'm the Acting Executive Director for the Commonwealth Casino Commission. Um, I, I'm here to echo the same uh, sentiment as the uh, uh, Chairman of the Commission with regards to ensuring that you know every government agency does its part to proper, properly regulate this uh, our casino licensee. The Commission, again, has been established to regulate uh, and focus on uh, the casino gaming operations. However, the uh, public perception is obviously that you know the, anything that uh, involves the casino, I mean uh, the casino licensee, is under the purview of uh, the commission. Um, the commission again doesn't have authority over uh, labor infrastructure, uh, over federal laws, and so on and so forth. Um, as the chairman did mention that yeah, yesterday, we did have a meeting with the secretary of labor, uh, Ms. Uh, Vicky uh, Benaventi, and. You know, we did learn um, that their oversight responsibility is really only on uh, employers that have less than 150 employees. And, you know, even with that, they don't really have enforcement powers to go and, and you know, enforce employers to comply with their statutes. So it really is all on uh, the U.S. Department of Labor. Uh, several years ago, we also had a meeting with the Nevada Gaming Control Board. Uh, we discussed with them on the enforcement of Title 31, the anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing uh, um, statutes. And, you know, they mentioned to us that they used to do it early on. However, um, when the feds found out, the feds came in, and they, uh, particularly the IRS and uh, uh, Financial and Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, they basically told them to cease the, this activity and that they don't have the jurisdiction to, to uh, pursue it. Um, so the NGCB ended up dissolving an entire division and, you know, because of the in-depth knowledge that their employees had uh, with respect to the Las Vegas casinos, um, the FinCEN and IRS ended up absorbing a lot of these employees. Uh, the commission, as the chairman mentioned, we are proposing an interagency task force uh, via a memorandum of agreement that will invite uh, a representative from each uh, regulatory agency that oversees uh, our casino licensee. Um, to come to the table and discuss issues, uh, challenges, enforcement, and solutions to effectively regulate our uh, casino gaming industry. And this, you know, I think is, is the best sort of comprehensive approach that we can take at this time. And uh, um, I guess lastly, I, I would like to uh, request that, you know, this body, um, particularly the, the House, uh, pursue um, in pushing uh, our House Bill 21-11, uh, as amended by the, uh, the Senate. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, Executive yeah. Director. Yeah. Um, so before we uh, go through the questions and answers, um, we do understand 1856 uh, under subsection 23 14. The, cas the Casino Commission uh, is authorized to supervise, monitor, investigate, uh, to, uh, and any other means to ensure the suitability, suitability of the compliance with legal, statutory, and contractual obligations of the owners. So this is where we stretch our this body's arm to the CCC uh, as even getting reports of what's going on. Um, today we have we don't receive because we in the past we're stuck between is it the uh, Commonwealth Casino uh, I mean Lottery Commission versus the CCC versus the Office of the Governor so there, there is a, a difference but under 1856 uh, we we do expect CCC to be uh, informing this body both bodies at least to to get answers as far as where we're at with the uh, the, the the licensee, and, and that's just my take. Um, other than that, under your uh, re regulations, uh, did any of the regulations um, were suspended in the past year? Um, and then specifically. Uh, with regards to suspension of regulations, were, was this any motion to suspend regulation under your ca Casino Commission uh, uh, regulations? I believe Is there any record? Had, um, a suspension for the commission order uh, to the minimum bank code requirements, but that's not the only one that's been around. Oh, amendments to? Uh, I don't know if we have a legal counsel here. To my knowledge, Mr. Chairman, we never yeah, clearly, uh, uh, what was the word, uh, suspend the regulations. We have amended yes. some of the orders that we have issued. This is uh, particularly in reference Just to the word uh, suspend. Did any uh, request to suspend regulations was ever brought up? Did, did, did we? Answer this, yeah. I, I, I don't know. But what I was making a reference is the, the amendment of the order that went out. I understand. No, I, I'm just going through my, uh, I just did notice. Was there any? You can get back to it. I, for, for my part, Mr. Chairman, I, I cannot recall ever suspending the regulations. Okay. Uh, particularly to accommodate. Uh, yeah. We've made amendments to our orders, but not to suspend the regulations to satisfy IPI or anyone else. We've gone through amendments of the regulations, but but, but not in, in, in the sense of suspending it from applying well, to specific. any section of the uh, regulations. Or did any suspension did ha occur ever? No? Not that you're aware of? Uh, I'm not aware of it, but our legal counsel uh, and us work very, very closely whenever we deal with yeah. the regulations. No, so, so the, yeah, I'm, I'm just asking because uh, under your own regulation, there is a section for natural disasters, closures. Um, under that, your rules 175-10-1-204-05 uh, with regards to natural disasters uh, and having the casino shut down. Um, because natural disaster, as defined, is not a pandemic, right? So we wanted to see um, if there was any okay, suspension uh, of any in, rules. In reference to that, uh, it wasn't really a suspension of the rule, but it was in furtherance of uh, for, for the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, when the governor issued his executive order mandating the closure of uh, facilities, including gaming, um, it, it wasn't us suspending the rule. It was us accommodating and pursuant to the executive order. We allowed uh, IPI, we actually allowed them to do two things. Initially, it was to allow them to wear the mask because uh, we initially do not allow uh, anyone who wears a mask to enter into a gaming facility. And I had lengthy discussion with our legal counsel whether granting them, because they were asking already oh, to protect the staff 
and to protect the employees and the patient, there was a move by our own staff saying, could we wear masks? IPI was asking, could we wear masks to, to protect the, them from the uh, coronavirus? After lengthy discussion of our legal counsel, looking at the restrictions on masks in reference to the requirement on our surveillance and monitor, it appears that the language in our regulation is talking in reference to the intent to commit illegal uh, activity, okay. wearing a mask to conceal your identity. Uh, so for medical reasons, uh, pursuant to the executive order, we granted IPM, we granted our employees to wear uh, this surgical mask uh, while at the floor for health reasons. Understood. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I'm not trying to get at anything. I'm just yeah, but but it's not. Yeah. To, yeah. Okay. So that, that's that's all my question is. Uh, uh, I'm just curious to find out if there is any uh, time or a time frame where the suspension of the rela uh, regulation did happen in the past year. Or Go ahead, uh, Mike. <clears throat> um, the the regulations to which you refer, I think do deal with natural disasters and deal with closures where the building has been damaged. To be perfectly frank, uh, when the, the regulations were first drafted, none of us imagined a pandemic could shut down our entire economy. Uh, I have drafted a proposed new regulation, a changed regulation. Uh, it has been presented to the executive director. It has not yet been presented to the commission for consideration. Okay. Uh, that would include pandemics okay. or, or uh, not to cut you off. I'm just saying if was there any. But, uh, but the current closure is due to the governor's order yeah, yeah. closing them, not any order of the commission. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I mean, if I may, I, just for your informational purposes, IPI is in technical suspension right now. Is gaming. I do not foresee it getting a, a green light from CCC. Uh, they have to come back after the government thinks it's clear. They have to come back to the CCC to request to go live. Okay. I think CCC should really examine IPI's current compliance with every laws and regulations prior to issuing the green light. Okay. And I'll get back to this at a later time, but um, I apologize, members. Um, so the rules for today, just you have five, each member uh, of the gaming, uh, both House and Senate, do have a five-minute uh, limit. Uh, two rounds, and then the non-members uh, would be towards the end, uh, if the, if time permits. Um, and with that, I'm gonna open up the floor to the members of the House or the Senate. Okay, I mean, I recognize uh, Senate uh, six two. Go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Both Chairman, thank you very much, and thank you very much, uh, CCC, for being here. My question is simple, and either you respond to it uh, briefly and or provide documents. I'd like to hear from you what is the overall IPI health or fiscal status? What exactly are the non-compliance issues? And if you may share or tell us what the punch list are that are pending with IPI. And I'm glad you mentioned that they're in technical suspension. What exactly is that technical suspension, if you can uh, share, share with us uh, right now? Uh, by technical suspension, it means they are not allowed to do any gaming operations. If and I may be very clear, I'm asking yeah. for, without, uh, because you know, sometimes we get frustrated. I get answers where I can't or it's an executive. Yeah. I want to know if you can generally tell us what is the overall health or physical status of IPI, what exactly is non-compliance, what are they non, uh, not complying with, and what are these punch lists, if any, that you've discussed with IPI that are pending punch list? if you can share with us. And after all that, what are your solutions or solutions uh, put forth by IPI to solve these items that they are not complying with? I could, could, maybe I should cover a little bit on the uh, casino license agreement. That's, uh, if you look at the casino license agreement, uh, Section 2 says the governor's office shall enforce the terms and conditions of this license agreement. Section 16 uh, specifies that uh, $20 million shall be paid six months uh, after groundbreaking on phase one. Phase one has not occurred yet. Now, because there, there were some issues of completion of projects at IPR, uh, IPI requested the Lottery Commission for amendment 
I believe it started with Amendment 5 moving forward. The Commonwealth Government, as part of the agreement to amend the Casino License Agreement, required concessions. And it started with that amendment, would require that IPI contribute $10 million in January 2018, $20 million in June 2018, and uh, $20 million every October starting uh, 2019 and every year thereafter. Uh, to my understanding, they, they paid the $10 million in January. They never paid the June nor the October. Then I also found as an update that the $10 million that was initially paid, there was a remaining balance of close to, I mean, over $5 million, uh, of which does not exist anymore. It was uh, cleared out. The account has been closed to, to pay off their, their obligations. Uh, I, we have a list of all the recipients of those four point some million dollars. I asked them for authority to release. They, they did not grant us, but uh, but that's where we are in terms of non-compliance. They, in my opinion, I, I can safely say that they are not in compliance with the Section 16 of the Casino License Agreement. Can you elaborate the uh, Section 16 again? Can you state what it, what exactly is Section 16 again? Uh, <clears throat> I made that uh, Senator 62 that. Uh, I give credence to the Lottery Commission of which you chaired that highlighted those specific sections because it was really a good deal on the part of the government. And that requires the licensee as part of the exclusive right to contribute to the community $20 million a year for community benefit fund. And it listed about five or six different areas that uh, the, the licensee will contribute uh, with consultation with the governor. Okay, and then thank you. And just clarification, uh, you do have a punch list of these items that are not being satisfied by... Uh, yeah, yes, we do. And we have also <clears throat> been in uh, communications with the governor. May you please share with the committee chair the punch list, and if you feel that some of those names are not to be added, if you can generalize and or categorize them so that we can actually have those reports. You're talking pending uh, current violations? Current violations, <coughs> any non-compliance issues, anything they need to do, and or possibly specifying whether they are directly under your control or indirectly under your control. Because you mentioned earlier that there are things and frustrations that you can't do anything about it. So whether the non-compliance issues are directly a violation of CCC or a violation of an agreement, but not necessarily with CCC. Am I making uh, sense? <coughs> Uh, yes, you do, but it's also a uh, <clears throat> part of pre pretty complex issues. On the federal part, we know that they have a pending issues on the stipulated agreement in reference to their uh, violations of the Fair Labor Standards Act. <clears throat> That's a, a pending issue that apparently the settlement agreement, the payment was not made on the agreed upon time. Uh, we know, anybody who reads the newspaper uh, recently, we know that there are at least two cases, uh, potentially more, that have gone uh, that have gone through the the federal litigation process. Uh, chairman, uh, not, uh, Spencer Chairman, I rasono na chatsadik si sa gawo rawni tres minutoa. Pwesto na lalo na yama magi i lista ni punch list. Masaya pa masaya kof complicated. Zay i rasono mama machine justi. I'm asking for this punch list because you know just like dealing with a patient, we like to understand the overall health status, fisc fiscal status, health-wise, of this company so that we can find out what is the next solution, whether you propose the next solution to us or what's the overall uh, reaction the CNMI should do or proactive. Uh, I, I, think, I think I, I can know. safely say that we have always been, since day one, concerned about their financial stability. No, but, but Chairman, if I may, what I'm saying is I need all this uh -huh. so we can all have a similar understanding of what we need to do or what is CCC, do, CCC doing on this of activity we have on a casino to start planning forward. Uh, what's going to happen? Is it going to shut down, not going to shut down? Uh, what are the negotiations? What are the give and takes? So that's why I'm asking all that. So I'll end it with that, Chairman. Perhaps on, on another setting, I can explain to you where we were leading in terms of financial suitability and the documents we required from them and the follow-up. So we'll discuss that maybe later. And counsel with the Chairman, as much as possible, I really do not want to hear that we can't share it. Uh, categorize them if you have to redact something so that we know that there's something leading to something and not just having a, a void of that there's 
you know what I mean, right? If you give me a document that there's something going on here, but this is all I can tell you. Tell me what you can tell me. Mr. Massey, Chairman. Mr. Massey, Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Any member? Uh, I recognize Rep. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, uh, CCC Chairman uh, Guerrero, Vice uh, Limapan, and Acting Interim Athlete. My question is just a yes or no. Uh, we have five minutes, and I've got other questions to ask. The first question, is IPI broke? Thank you, um, Rep. Lipan. We do have the uh, audited. My question is yes or no. I don't want to hear an illustration. Yes or no? Is IPI broke? We are restricted under 2314. Then what is the purpose of us asking question? This we is why this is why we cannot get the information from CCC. Why are we going to hide? How can we appease the community? when we can't even get a response. So the question is IPI broke. What is so difficult to say no or yes? Can we, can we mention that? We're, we are restricted under 2314. This is a, a Commonwealth uh, statute. Um, the only thing we can share is the audit of financial statements and the audit of financial statements is, paints a clear picture um, up until eight, uh, December Mr. Chairman, 31st. I'm asking a question, Mr. Chairman. I'm providing an answer. And I don't want to hear a lengthy. I know that all I'm asking is a yes or no. My good colleague here, a senator, asked the state of the financial condition of IPI, and, and I haven't heard a response. Mr. Chairman, can I ask the Chairman Lee, what does he mean by broke? Meaning, they can't even pay CUC. Where are they getting the money to pay CUC? If, if so, so the question is, is IPI broke? Okay, if the, if the question is leading to are they paying their debts that is due <coughs> on time, the answer is yes, they are. The question is, are they broke or not? Yes or no? That's all I'm asking. And you, you continue to cite a section. I don't want to hear a section. For the the community to understand where is IPI, they want to know a yes or no, not a lengthy explanation. How can you educate a, a eight year old local indigent that can bear understand the English language? But if you a ask a question and your response is a yes or no, they would definitely understand what the question is. So. The question is, is it is IPI broke or, or not? Can I speak? Um, thank you, uh, Rep. Lipan. Uh, unfortunately, again, we can't answer, but we do have uh, um, IPI here with me or with us that they could probably answer that question for you because they can disclose those information. So. <clears throat> again, you know, this is why we cannot get where we want with this because it seems like we have too many hidden confidentiality, too many of this. It's so disappointing that this has been going on and on and on and on. And when you guys come in here asking us to, to pass a certain legislation, it's, it's, it's like you want it on a Schubert plate. Now when it's the legislature asking a question, we can't even get a, a decent response. I don't understand why that you want <clears throat> to amend the regulation or to have more power, but we can't get a definite answer. I just can't, I can't comprehend that. It, it doesn't make sense to me that if you want something, there's got to be something in return. So it, it's, it's just common decency. So not to drag on because I got five minutes time. You're, you're share, you mentioned that <clears throat> you're requiring IPA, a three-month payroll reserve. 
Why not impose a bonding? A $500 million bonding. So that means not only payroll, all the obligation that they owe must be Mr. Chairman, if, if I may Use for this purpose. We, we have, uh, <clears throat> since day one, looked at the issue of bonding, not just in terms of the, the requirement for the minimum macro requirement, but also for construction. And uh, they came back with the answer that it's impossible for them to find any bonding, any insurance agency that will post a bond of any kind. We contacted several insurance companies to verify, and they were correct. It's, it's impossible to get a local bonding for, for this type. But you know, life is not about yes or no. It's not about black or white. As much as we would like to say yes, that's why. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I got a five minute line here and you're Chairman explaining to me and you're cutting my time here. Chamali, I answered your uh -huh. question, sir. You asked me uh, whether or not I said, if your definition is, are they paying their debt on time as they do? I said, no, they're not. It, it's I not about, you. I am not asking by definition if they're paying their dues or time. I'm just asking a simple, simple, yeah. common, yeah common sense yeah. question. So as we speak today, the, your answer to you is that yes, they are. If you're talking about today, I do not see the the revenue there to pay the obligation. So the answer is... If, if, if that's the case, why are they in so deep financial mess? If, if, if this company is, is sound, why are they de in deep financial mess? Because if, if it's sound, and proven that they're not, we will not be sitting here asking you all these questions. Why is this not being paid? Why is that not being paid? See, we've been asking that question since day one that we found out the condition of IPI. With due respect to the company, but now is not the time to, to, to be prolonging this. We want definite answer. I myself, as, as a member of this community, uh, committee, wants a definite answer because I am tired being put to the side, ask a question, which the chairman of this gaming committee have been asking, supporting documents to prove our theory that this company is not broke. But I can't prove that because we have confidentiality. We pull in tax and revenue, they brought their own attorney because of confidentiality. How in the heck do we solve a problem when too much confidentiality? Mr. Chairman, if, if you're expecting me to, to vote for, for that legislation to give you guys more power, I will just tell you right now that I will not support it. I will not support it because I want a definite answer. I will hear for this time, Mr. Chairman, on two sets. Thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Lee. Uh, I'll give you one minute to respond. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to respond to Rep. Lee with regards to the confidentiality. Um, I would recommend maybe changing the law to allow us to provide that information. Um, it is a three-year felony for us to provide uh, confidential information if, if that we're restricted by. Thank you, Sorry. Mr. Atalik. Uh, now recognize Rep. Probes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hello? Can everybody hear me okay? Kevin, may I proceed? You may, pre you may proceed. Thank you. I want to thank you, uh, uh, the, uh, our uh, colleagues and, and uh, chairman and uh, senate chairman for calling this meeting, this joint meeting. I appreciate the Casino Commission members coming in, commissioners, and the acting uh, executive director, thank you. I also appreciate the fact that we have uh, Mr. Su Hong Tao in, uh, here as well, uh, in attendance, as, as well as, uh, um, who, who else, I'm sorry, uh, who else is here for, from IPI to represent IPI, uh, Mr. Chairman? That's my first question. Uh, Oops, I, I don't have the, the list right now. If that's the case, I would like, um, I, 
I have this question. We just heard from uh, Chairman Edilin Guerrero that he said that IPI is not in compliance with sec Section 16 of the license and um, that $4.7 million has been paid out. Um, but IPI will not authorize the release of where this money went to. Uh, and, and another $5 million left of the account has been spent. And the account has been drained out, closed out. So <laughs> I don't understand how this community benefit fund that exists is we're not privy. The people who are supposed to benefit from it is not privy to where this money went. I, 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 I really am disappointed. And I'm going to echo Chairman uh, Lee Pond's sentiments as well. We all get asked. We ask the questions. We don't get answers. We get redirected. Oh, you'll need to check the governor. So we did. The minority team did. We wrote to the governor to ask. And we came up with about $1.8 million that, that would, could be asked for or whatever. But, but the big picture here, which is really distressing, is before COVID, before uh, all of these excuses, they had a contractual obligation with this community benefit fund, at, which should total at least $40 million by now. So they you can't use excuses anymore. So we know that $10 million essentially has been drained out of the community benefit fund. This is closed out. That's $30 million less than what should be in there in the first place on escrow. Okay, so for, uh, for uh, Chairman, at this point, I would like to request uh, uh, that um, we, we, we ask, simply ask the uh, representatives IPI to come up and explain to us where this money went, and if they can't do that, can we ask them why they will not tell us where this money went? Because our people are suffering right now, and they'd like to know how it was spent. Who benefited from this? Was it the community, or was it certain people? That is my first question. So can we request that IPI executives come on, come, come over and and ask, answer these questions. Thank you, Rep. Uh, at this time, IPI is not under the uh, the list uh, uh, on the OGA to report its CCC. So that's something that the committee on gaming would have to request at a later date. Okay. They're not listed Thank in you, the Chair. attendance. Thank you, but they are in attendance. So I wanted that on record that I at least asked because it's pointless that they supposedly paid out $10 million of this community benefit fund, and, and we have yet to know who benefited from it. This is not a, this is a nonpartisan thing. We should all be on the same page of this, demanding this. And uh, Chairman, I sincerely hope at this point that you utilize your subpoena powers and get this information to all gaming committee members in the House and Senate. They want to have an executive meeting, then we can do that. I, um, I know I'm almost time up and this is the first round, but I do have a couple other questions. Uh, uh, for Chairman uh, Edilyn Guerrero, uh, there was a meeting between CCC and the IPI chairwoman and uh, Mr. Suhong Tao on Wednesday. And I I'd like to know why this wasn't a public meeting as we were, I thought we were told that this would be a, a, a public meeting. Uh, but apparently it was a private meeting. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to know the purpose of this meeting, who exactly was in attendance, and what was discussed, and what were the outcomes? Thank you, Rep. Props. I'll let the uh, Chairman respond. Uh, before I let the Chairman, uh, Charlie, go ahead and... Uh, Thank you, Chairman. You, chairman. Uh, to respond to uh, uh, Rep. Uh, Probes' uh, uh, concern with regards to the CBF issue. Uh, I can update you that uh, due to the investigations that has begun during the chairman's uh, time as executive director, uh, the investigation was uh, finalized, the complaint was drafted and finalized, and um, uh, I did sign it on April 28th of uh, uh, 2020, and so it's been filed with the commission. Thank you, uh, Director. Uh, chairman, uh, respond to any response? By, by the way, just to, for, for the members' uh, knowledge, when we file the complaint, as the director said, it begins the process 
to re-examine their financial suitability. If they are not able to provide, then the next normal sequence of event would be some kind of a possible uh, public financial suitability hearing with the idea of a possible suspension or revocation. So that process has begun. What was discussed with the Madam Chair and some of her staff, staff um, it was basically what I said when, on the opening statement. We were very concerned about the status of the employees' housing. We were very concerned about the payroll, because we had information that the payroll may not be forthcoming. We wanted to hear it from the Madam Chair herself, that this is an issue that we have already begun the process, and that process may involve a possible official suspension or revocation of your license. So as a courtesy to a company who has put in more than a billion dollars into this project, the facility down there, which cost about uh, originally 300 million, is now over 700 million. So as a courtesy to the Madam Chair, we decided that uh, I and the Vice Chair only, there were no quorums, it wasn't a publicly held meeting, it was a private meeting with the, the director and the, the, man, the division managers, myself and the Vice Chair only, uh, to hear from the Madam Chair what is her explanation as to why this is happening. So from what we gathered, we've been assured that, that those, that the parent company will uh, funnel the money in to cover the utilities, to cover payroll, and to begin addressing some of the other issues uh, involved with the pending obligations. We've been reminded too, it was a four hour meeting about the problem of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic and the, how the international community, including other gaming jurisdictions, are suffering. Uh, frankly speaking, and I didn't mean to interrupt the, the Madam Chair, but we were very frustrated even in that meeting to, to a point of, you know, people come close to pounding tables, but um, that's what the meeting was. And, and nothing, uh, nothing else other than, hey, you got some very urgent responsibility, IPI, uh, satisfy those, comply with the requirements. The process has begun for us to re-examine your license. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Rep. Ropes, do you yield? You have 30 seconds. Okay, I'll make it short and sweet for, and wait for round two. Thank you, Chairman. I uh, want to close out with uh, uh, one more question. The biggest concern uh, right now that uh, we've been hearing is the ability for the casino uh, uh, IPI to complete that casino hotel in Garaban and how it would become not just an eyesore but a hazard for all businesses in Garapan. Um, I'd like to hear from CCC if they feel, or I know they can't talk about the exact numbers or whatever, but is it IPI in, um, are they financially solvent enough to complete that casino hotel? Because in my personal opinion, I, I really don't believe that the government should allow any granting of any public lands or any, any other future projects until that casino hotel is done because it is a grave injustice for them to start on another project when that one is not done. That's something that's very basic. So, uh, Chairman, uh, Acting uh, Executive Director, uh, whichever would like to answer this question, uh, are they financially solvent enough or capable of finishing that, that hotel casino that has been extended multiple, multiple times for every reason under the sun. Um, so I'd like their opinion on that. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman and members, uh, with the, with the um, Community Benefit Fund aside, put that aside for now in reference to what they owe, uh, based on the financial uh, loan facility that had been provided to the Commission previously, they had, as an example during our review on financial suitability, had access to $500 million for this project. Uh, and of that, I believe $165 million has already been disbursed. So again, putting aside the Community Benefit Fund, uh, it is our opinion that if those uh, loan facility were to proceed, and I understand there's a problem right now with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and, and the remaining balance, it is our position that the owners are still committed to finishing IPR. Uh, they already spent over 700 million there. The construction is continuing. It hasn't stopped. And I suggest perhaps that rather than me talking about it, that maybe we set uh, 
a date uh, for all members of this gaming of both houses come down and we see what IPI is currently doing at the construction site because you never stop. Uh, so based on, on the loan facility that we have been provided, if they kept the intent and purposes uh, of that particular loan, there's sufficient money there that IPI could type to complete uh, IPR. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chair recognizes uh, Senator Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman uh, Guerrero, Vice Chair uh, and members of the Commission, thank you for coming up here to uh, brief us of the, the status of the the uh, the financial industry here in the uh, in the Pamuma. The question that was asked uh, earlier, whether IPS broke or not, and the answer was was they're not they're not paying on time. So so it sounds like they're still able to pay, but not on time. That's correct. In reference to payroll. Uh, all of the payroll has been fully paid to date. The next one is just coming Friday. We have been assured. We were worried that there wasn't sufficient for this Friday, and we were assured that the parent company will inject the necessary funding. Uh, and I was informed this morning that all the transfers are actually occurring to make sure that all employees get paid this Friday and there will be no delay. Uh, now, uh, since you said that they're not paying on time, the 50 million uh, license fee that is uh, due on on this coming August. Are they going to pay on time? We we asked we ask those two of the uh, chair lady on our meeting yesterday or uh, two days ago uh, about the the 20 million community benefit fund due in October 2020, the 15.5 million due in August 12th for the uh, annual license fee, and the 3.1 million for the the uh, the regulatory fee fund. Uh, we've been assured that the, the, the board of directors is aware of those costs. Mm -hmm. And aside from the uh, community benefit fund, that they are prepared to make the necessary, uh, the exclusive license fee and the regulatory fee. Again, they're approaching the community benefit fund differently because they are taking the position that it was due 60 days after groundbreaking on phase one. They didn't realize that amendment number five injected it earlier. They, they were under the impression uh, that it was due when they do the MRP. But anyway, that's ongoing discussion with them. And to my knowledge, and I was just getting text that uh, the, the governor, attorney general, is meeting right now over this matter and so and uh, to discuss this this very subject. So any 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 timeline if they don't pay on the due date. Any timeline that um, you will give before yeah. you do, or you mentioned earlier about revocation? Any um, timeline before you decided for revocation? Yeah, our procedure would be that come August 12th, if uh, they don't pay the 15 million, uh, CCC, uh, uh. CCC would immediately launch an investigation to make sure no payment has been made from Hong Kong. Once we find that, we would issue a complaint, and that complaint would be saying that you delayed, like we did on the last, uh, on the last years, the last year's community benefit, I mean, uh, ca casino license uh, uh, agreement, uh, th they, there was a delay in full payment. The, the governor consulted with the CCC to have an immediate closure of the casino on August 13. It was due on August 12. We had a meeting with the governor and their staff that if they don't pay by 4.30 on August 12, we're supposed to immediately close down all gaming. I informed the governor that we have a procedure in place that if they violate it, they, they are entitled to the due process and that the most we can do is that after completion of our investigation to make sure the payment in fact was not made, then we have to uh, give them the complaint and they have 15 days to cure. Uh, there was a little disagreement between us and the governor because he wanted that 15 days to begin August 13 as a penalty. Our 15 days begin at the time that we gave IPI the complaint. But to make a long story short, IPI paid 15 days from August 13. And as a result of the full payment of that, CCC imposed a $25,000 a day penalty to be paid every day for that 15 days, total of 375, of which went to the general fund. 
Thank you, Chairman. And, and respect to uh, power and water on all those uh, staff housing. That's ridiculous to 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 uh, put the burden on the employees when, in fact, they're not receiving any salary. I, I, I mean, you mentioned earlier in regards to that you disagree with all those employees that have been furloughed. Are those uh, being discussed very seriously? And, and what is the response uh, to the company in regards to those? Because it's ridiculous we having them pay power and water when, in fact, they're not receiving anything. We have been assured by the top management that IPI will continue to pay for the utility for those employees that have been furloughed. I raise this question because everybody here knows that we lack the, the workforce, and we're depending on foreign workforce. And we don't want to create any bad image in regards to workforce. And we, if there's any violation that this company uh, violate any federal, uh, I'm, I'm afraid that in the future we might have problem with with uh, foreign workforce, even with I'm 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 feeling that even with their country, they might not allow the people to con to continue to come and and and, and work for the com come home. That's why we we need to to uh, to address this judiciously to prevent from happening, and we don't want any like I said bad image in the future, and I know that we're not able to produce our own. Workforce, especially for the two smaller islands, Indian and, and Saipan. So, Mr. Chairman, I think this is very serious because workforce is one of the main components of economic growth, and this must be addressed uh, seriously. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Th th thank you, Mr. Uh, Senator Cruz, on, on that. Unfortunately, um, the CCC uh, and so is the Department of Labor is very limited uh, authority. Quite a lot of the areas you cited actually is the responsibility of the federal government, whether it's employment, whether who enters into the skew labor. Uh, but I think the idea uh, that discusses with the governor, if he can assist us in taking the lead, where every government or department involved with the casino license agreement form uh, like a task force or a memorandum of understanding or agreement so that we can launch it, perhaps see how it can work to complete IPR and prepare for phase one and phase two. Well, we're, we're doing this as a coordinated uh, effort rather than every department, every jurisdiction trying to enforce its own. Uh, CCC is on gaming. We're doing our very best to reach out. And like uh, the chairman noted, that uh, we're only relying on that authority, that IPI, you must honor your contractual obligations. That is the authority where we're forcing. But Public Works and their building code has their very stringent regulations on the safety of the building. And, you know, unfortunately, CNMA Labor is very limited access to that. It's all the Department of Labor, the Homeland Security, the, the FinCEN for Title 31. We are prohibited towards investigating in the, we can only monitor and require IPI to be in compliance with, with uh, Bank Secrecy Act as an example. But thank you for, for, for the comments. And maybe in the future you can help us when we meet again that perhaps we can get everybody together and, and see where we can work. Well, we're not here just to justify anything. We're here to tell you this is a problem. We're trying to get help, and but there's not much we can do. And it's this, we're seeking your help, and we're seeking your advice on how to improve it, not just to identify the problems. But help us and tell us how you think we can do this. And we're not, any, we're not down there, CCC, with a magical wand. I mean, we have lawyers that are saying it's wonderful for you to do that, but what authority do you have? And I revert back to you have an obligation to, to comply with your contractual agreement. It says, what authority do you have? They keep repeating that and, you know, take me to court and we'll see how you're going to stand. Those kind of stuff constantly come up. So help us. Uh, this is not CCC law. This is not CCC regulations. This is ours. The casino license agreement is, is ours. Help us find a way to do this. We're not just a problem people, and your job is not just to identify the problems. Help us find the solutions. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Senator Cruz, you yield. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. you uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator, uh, Chairman, I recognize the presence of uh, Senator Jude. Uh, you yield. Members, first round. OK. I'll open the floor. Oh, 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 let me uh, recognize Rep. Sablon first for the first round after the non-members. 
three minutes or five minutes for non members i see thank you mr chairman welcome members of the commission mr director mr ernest uh i like to follow up on the question regarding the community benefit fund um ipi is required under the commission's regulations to uh comply with congressional oversight requests and i understand that you have indicated that they have not agreed to authorize you to release the records pertaining to the community benefit fund and it is also my understanding that ipi has failed to respond to the public auditor's request for records pertaining to the community benefit fund but if this committee were to subpoena those records from ipi as requested by the minority leader and if ipi were to ignore that legislative oversight request as well will the commission take disciplinary action to assist this committee in its work i think if our legal counsel says you can release it i think we're ready to release it Done. Yeah, yeah. Right. My, my understanding was that you would be subpoenaing the documents from IPI. We, that, that certainly does not involve any concern that I have regarding any commission staff. And then if IPI were ignoring uh, duly issued process, I think that's something that the commission could certainly uh, declare unsuitable. It would require uh, notice and a hearing. And then uh, after that, it could order them to comply. Although I think respectfully uh, it would probably get taken up in court if they failed to honor your su subpoena that th there are other avenues. Sure. I, my question is it's listed in your regulations as grounds for disciplinary action if they fail to comply with legislative oversight and I want assurance from this body that you will take that disciplinary action if we can establish that they are failing. I would only just ask that that be directed to the executive director because he doesn't need to necessarily remain neutral, whereas the members of the commission would be the judges of these actions and would need to remain impartial and neutral. Thank you. My next question has to do with IPI's financial suitability. Uh, Mr. Guerrero, Mr. Chairman, is, is it the intention of the commission to actually hold a financial suitability hearing, and if so, when? And if not, what, what other conditions need to be met in order for the commission to take this step? We, we have been very concerned since day one because when we look at the actual license agreement, I did not see the, the actual financial statement that the Lottery Commission, when they granted the license to IPI, any financial statement that proves that they are financially at that time suitable to launch a two billion dollar investment or construct two thousand new rooms we've been seeking and trying to find out from the lottery commission what document do you really have to proceed with that in the first place uh, so we did our own investigations with them saying look uh, and we were assured before i don't know mr director why you're asking we're paying our bills on time sometimes before they do and that was correct in the first two years but after the first two years, we reached out and we said, we, I'm not comfortable with this. Show us. So they provided us the three different loan facilities from Korean investors. Keep in mind that this company have never borrowed money. They never floated a bond, never borrowed money from any financial institutions. This is all their own money and their own intercompany uh, loans. Uh, but they to show us that they are, have access to outside uh, funding, they, they showed us some documents from the Korean. We spent about a year w working and discussing with the Korean investment firms. They were ready to pump in over 300 million just to finish the facility. It only ended up the, their, their expectations were, were not realistic. So we said this is not good. We were again about to open the financial suitability hearing, public hearing. They came through with a $500 million loan facility from the Japanese. We reviewed the loan. It appears very genuine. And that is more than enough at that time to see that the facility will be done and they will comply with all of that. Then we saw that they actually drawn down $100 million already. We inquired as to where that money went. A good part of it went to pay intercompany loans and, and interests. 
and 13 million went to construction and a few million went to payroll and other working capital. Then we found out that another 65 million had been drawn down. So from our perspective, if you're looking at financial stability and this company has access to the remaining of the 500 million, as long as that agreement is still intact and, and we haven't heard anything to the contrary, then there's really no need to do a financial stability if if the company and the parent company puts it on, for example, uh, which we are asking for a board resolution that honors that every amount will be used for IPI, CNMI. I see. So you are still awaiting some documented assurance that the parent company will commit sustained support to the CNMI company to meet IPI's obligations. Uh, yes, and we made that clear to Madam Chair Lady too, that uh, the commission continues to be concerned about that. But as you know, you know the, the issue of uh, access to it is, is a little bit more difficult right now because of the COVID-19, it affected the, the, the whole world. Uh, but we're still, we haven't seen anything to the contrary that those funds are, are not available. So we, we are checking with them. Uh, it, it complicates it because of the travel restrictions. Uh, we are insisting too, by the way, that IPI must immediately appoint a CEO or a chairman, however you want to call the title, who has the authority to make decisions on island. Because it's, uh, they, they went through some personal changes at the top level. Thank you. And uh, my last Last question, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Casino Commission recently issued an order, several months ago issued an order to IPI to, to pay its vendors uh, what they were owed. And in the months that have followed, there have been new lawsuits, and including just a couple more in the last week, as, and we understand that there are other lawsuits to come from vendors who are claiming non-payment. What is the status of IPI's compliance with your order? And can you provide this committee with a list of the vendors who have been paid, as well as the vendors who have not been paid? Uh, on the list of vendors who have been paid or not paid, I think you need to clarify that before our legal counsel if, if we can review the identity of the companies and the amount, because we, I don't know if we need the, the vendor's permission to release that. They may be competing with other vendors. Uh, the CCC did uh, issue uh, CCC order 2020-001. That order basically says that uh, IPI provide the commission a list of all uncontested vendors, vendors whose invoices are uncontested that are 90 days uh, due owe, 90 days or more older, uh, and and a list of vendors that are currently contested, whether those contests is either through mediation, negotiations, or in court. Uh, they gave us a two-page list of vendors that were not contested, with invoices not contested, and they gave us information that those vendors have been paid. The order says you must pay on or before March 10, 2020. So we had a list, a two two-page listing on Excel spreadsheet on the amount that they were paid on, on, on that time. I wasn't too comfortable whether that was complete, so uh, we, the staff is actually working to make sure that there are some vendors out there that may not be listed, that probably are still owed. On the vendors that are contested, we cannot interfere when they already file at the federal court. When this matter is before the court, uh, CCC really should wait to see the final resolution. We understand that when the court issues the final ruling, which it did with one or two of the companies. The next question that we have is that those should really fall in as to immediately do. And that's something we've been talking to our legal counsel and IPI's legal counsel to inform us that they are appealing that. So during appeal, we can't jump in. We have to wait for the sequence of event. It's not like we like to, it's just the way that the legal process works. But yes, the order says if you owe anyone that is 90 days or older, pay them only before March. And then this is other section 10 of that agreement basically says that IPI board of directors provide assurance to the commission. And there's like seven different assurances. One of them is that you are in good financial condition, that you don't owe any vendors that's 90 days or older that's uncontested, and that you will have in, that you have enough money to finish IPR. And there's a couple of others and I think you have access to that order. Those are the certifications that we have received to date. So, whether we, go ahead. are they compliant? 
there is a list, like I said, two pages of uh, vendors that have been paid in full, which they were not before. So in, in that regards, yes. In reference to the certification, the certification that's been signed appears to be in compliance, but whether or not it's true, which we're verifying, how do we go about assuring the authenticity and truthfulness of this certification? How can you say that you don't owe when, when in fact you do? How can you say you're in good financial condition when the CUC was disconnected? So the normal condition would be we reach out to this person or this who certified and we may revoke their, their employee license or key employee license. In this case, this is the corporate, the, the board that's issuing the stuff so we, we can't revoke a license we never issued. So we're examining now the need to change our regulations to require the board to be licensed by CCC. So we have something to, to pull. Thank, thank you, Mr. Guerrero. And uh, just a point of order, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have Mr. Su Hong Tao from IPI in the, in the gallery here. And my understanding is that he was invited here at the invitation of the Casino Commission. Can we bring him up to the gallery to answer questions? Uh, that will be up to the members. Uh, and he's here with his translator, so he, he came prepared to answer questions. Uh, I leave it to the members. Okay. Well, uh, we want to finish off with CCC, as one member stated. Uh, is there any? Hold on. One moment. Let's take a short recess. <laughs> Chairman Guerrero, uh, so I are they here to present or? Are, are we in recess? Yes. Uh, during the meeting with the chair lady, it was sometimes a little bit heated because CCC is running out of patience. And I told him, I said, you tell me, what am I going to tell the legislature? Better yet, you come with me. So in case they have any questions, they can hear directly from the, as they say, horses in the mouth. Uh, they're, they're here, so, so Tao, uh, Hannah Ma is the translator, and a gentleman by the name of Mr. Su, who has uh, very close information to Mr. G and the uh, chair lady. But uh, I, I don't know exactly, I, I assume that they, they're not familiar either as to what information you need from them. But I saw that, uh, because they, we're having a meeting at three o'clock, with the governor and the AG right, right now. They're also supposed uh, to be Chairman, in that meeting. before you proceed, I mean, are they authorized to, be, to speak on behalf of the company? Uh, I, if not, then I asked uh, the uh, Mr. Tao is, but I asked Mr. Su whether or not he has the authority. And uh, Madam Chair says, yes, he has the authority to speak on behalf of IPI. And based on what we heard from him, he really should have been appointed an equivalent to a CEO because he already knew exactly what's going on. He's a close family friend of the, the owners and who has intimate knowledge of this, and to my knowledge, is also a major investor on island for some other projects that are non-gaming related. I, I don't know, I only met the gentleman two days ago, so, and um, okay. I, I, uh, I might submit, I, I did Chair. say, you, we're going up, so. Thank you. Uh, I think before we invite Mr. Su up, we'll finish with the CCC before we, you know, stray, uh, stray off too far. Uh, I'll go back. Uh, we'll I'll recognize re a senator, and then if there's no member, uh, first, yeah, so, yeah, uh, second round already. Okay. Okay, we're back in session, uh, and I'll recognize uh, Senator uh, Six Two. Thank you so much. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, uh, where is Deep Back in all this? Are they involved with you at all? Are you involved with them? Have they reported to you? Have they written reports to you? Have they advised uh, the governor? Have they advised IPI? Uh, where are they? Are they? Do they exist? Do they not exist? Uh, briefly, please. The, the DPAC is the Development Planning Advisory Committee. It was built into the license agreement. 
And technically, there's supposed to be two deep pack. One deep pack is supposed to be advising directly to the governor and only to the governor. The other deep pack is supposed to be advising IPI. Now, the original intent, as you know, um, Mr. Senator, since, since the Lottery Commission inserted it, deep pack was supposed to be involved before even groundbreaking, including the archaeological and historical issues. Deep pack came to existence. Uh, sorry for the terminology, Johnny. Come lately because the project was already proceeding without any DPAC. When we got involved, we, we reached out to DPAC and it went into uh, the CNMI DPAC was uh, given to Pacific Century. A guy named James Chua, founder later on is the owner of LJ store. Now, the guy is pretty knowledgeable on a lot of issues. And he's supposed to be advising the governor on, on the development part of it. By the time, in my opinion, by the time the CNMA governor's deep pack in, got involved, uh, the building itself is already progressing. And it appears that their tail end is only on the landscaping that it architecturally meet the, the cultural um, requirements and, and very little other issues. They, there were concerns before about the structural safety. Uh, Chairman, do they still exist? I, I don't know. Uh, because they do not report to the CCC. Are they still getting paid? I'm not aware. Have they? When was the last time they did any reporting or collaboration with you? Yeah. Yeah. If you really look at it too, it wasn't even supposed to be in existence on phase one or two. It's supposed to be like a short term for the initial gaming facility, and it was catered towards the governor's opinion. We we asked for the report. Chairman, you get it. I'll just uh, skip over to the next question. They're not temporary. The purpose of DPAC is really a POC. In every project, they are the point of contact between the investor, the licensee, and the government to make sure they facilitate and review everything that has to go with the casino agreement. That's generally. Now, the reason why I'm asking is because we're having a lot of drama, and some of this drama, I believe, if they were there, there could have been the guidance in between the agreement governor and the agreement signer of IPI. Well, based on my reading of that, it, it's supposed to exist. For, they got a $480,000 per year for, I think, two and a half years. So anything among, beyond that, I don't see how they're compensated. to. They're supposed to be have processes that were put in place. Mm -hmm. And I, it looked like the processes were skipped over. And then now we have a wispy tendrils with drama. Mm -hmm. Now, next question, Chairman. And I'd like to, so you have no authority, just for clarification, no authority, or you have yet to communicate with DPAC, or you don't even know whether they exist but or not? We, we have not seen DPAC in, in the last two, three years. So maybe, maybe we can ask IPI when they get on, have they dealt with DPAC with respect to construction and their project, no? So, Chairman? I think amendment number six, uh, Mr. Senator, amendment number six of the casino license uh, agreement deleted the DPAC. So the next question, thank you for saying that. How many from, amendments from, have we? From the initial gaming facility project, the Garapan project. Yes, thank you. So you just uh, moved into my next question. How many amendments have we had now? Eight. Eight. And what is in the Eighth Amendment? That's something to do with allowing the shareholder to uh, have shares not less than 10%. And I believe it's also allowing other investors that are dealing with the hospitality, the hotel. Right, related to, to when was the which amendment did we amend it, the community chest? I believe number five. And forward. You're, and you're telling us that the signers of that agreement did not know that it was moved forward? Uh, to my, as far as I'm concerned, they should be. For all lawyers were involved, but that's what they're claiming now. That IPI was not aware that that amendment number five moved up the payment. I was just handed to this morning a position paper by IPI, which again reiterated that position. That, that they, they don't know that they sign a document and they don't know about it? Don't ask me that. I mean, that's, you ask them. So I hope that question, because I'm not going to be here too long, I guess I'm hoping we have another session, yeah. but I hope members ask those questions to try and get clarification on the DPAC and whether they, they are paying funds to, to that uh, organization. And at the same time, why is it that no one is aware of an agreement 
I mean, when we made this license, I'll tell you, we did not expect to have all these amendments. And then we start getting into issues. And I'm personally concerned because I'm a signer of that agreement. We cannot just change the agreements rinky-dink-wise. And I'm really hoping, Chairman, that, you know, Chairman, when you guys brought over these amendments for the CCC, let's try not to do a very comprehensive bill with so many angles. Bring in certain issues. What do you want changed? I, I want to have an escrow. You know, we, if we can't do a bonding, put in the law. There's going to be an escrow, and this is the percentage. We make the bill, simple bill, boom. This is what's happening. I want to control of the lottery commission. Maybe they're getting out of our hand. I want to know who's controlling this agreement, who's making the changes. If we're having, having different people making decisions on this agreement, I don't know. You asked the legislators that made this law, 1856. It changed two times. Was it 36, 38, 42, 56? We keep changing it. We no longer know where we're heading. I'm not saying we don't know. I'm saying things are changing. And I really want IPI, and I'm glad they're here. Please go back to your proposal and understand the negotiations made on the original agreement, why we signed on it. You are fully aware of our labor issues. We put that on the table. We played give and take. You took some, we took some. Those were, for me, were supposed to be final, final. And that the only amendment, number one, was the shareholders with respect to Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Now I'm hearing there's another amendment on the shareholders. Please, this is not a rink-a-dink business. The legislators that dreamt of this, the now deceased governor that dreamt of this, the people that drafted the bill, there were a lot of opposition. And no wonder the people are concerned. We cannot keep changing this document. Let's find out what is wrong and let us all know and let all the people know what is wrong. Let's not play around with it. And please, I know you, IPI, you're listening, and I'm going to go out of, out of end on this. You're here, you're listening. You've had a lot of turnovers in your corporation. Those are red flags. I don't know what advisors and consultants you have. I don't know what lawyers you have. But you know what? We really, really, really want to believe in you because there are lives of retirees that rely on the money you pay us to be here. We are here to help you, and you should help us to help you, help us help you. And I know that there's a lot of things that you believe because you are a nation of three to 4,000 year civilization that you can just do whatever you want. This is America. Let's do an American business. And that's why you're here. Because I believe you're here because we are America and that we are not just going to do whatever we want with laws. Because our laws in America with investors and businessmen, it's equal and fair. We don't just change it overnight. So let's make sure, and I'm saying that, I'm sorry if I'm raising my voice, but all I'm saying is there are so many amendments and it just so baffles me and bothers me for our chairman to say that IPI did not know that the community chest was moved forward. That is just very sad. Thank you, Chairman. I guess I'll yield, and hopefully we have another session. Just must. Go, sure. uh, please respond, because I kind of sure. went off tangent, but go ahead. Uh, for, for, uh, I, I generally, I, I concur with your opinion, the Senator. Uh, but I want to make it clear, the Casino Commission have nothing to do with those amendments. Those were made by the Lottery Commission. We've been very concerned about those amendments being made before consultation with the Casino Commission. Uh, and in reference to what I just said, that they are claiming that they don't know, believe me, we have some pretty harsh discussions with them about this is a multi-billion dollar company. Don't give me that, pardon the language, don't give me that shit, because I know it's not true. Chairman, and Ilekunin, uh I'm not saying that you're fully yeah. responsible, but I just, I just don't believe, because you mentioned you need a task force. I just don't believe that we have a commission and we have all these other departments and that we actually need a task force. You know, of course we do, because you're saying we do. But come on, where is DPW? Where are you guys? What is it that you need? Let's not beat around the bush. 
And now we have a chairman saying that all these things are not coming together. You know, if we continue to not know and point fingers and pretend we don't know, I'm not blaming you, chairman. All these investors, they will continue to run around us in circle. So please thank you, chairman, for talking about the task force. Let's all, and I know that our probes mentioned that this is there's no party affiliated here. Let's work together yeah. so that we can have a vision to move forward. And whomever's not doing their job, fire them. Okay. I, I made that uh, sure that uh, I wasn't necessarily talking about creating a task force, but developing some kind of an interdepartmental agreement, an MOA or an MOU. Uh, you know, if you're going to be blaming individual actions, we need to examine some of the laws itself. Uh, because including the infrastructure impact fee, the law seems to talk about public works being the implementing agency. We look into that. And the more I look into public works, the more I feel sorry for that department because I don't think that they are equipped to deal with this, uh, even the building code section. So what they're doing now is a matter of practice. They cannot and they do not have the technical capability in-house. So they require every major project, including IPI, to contract with a private architectural engineering firm certified by the CNMI to basically be the liaison to, to fulfill the requirements of the building code. But the uh, public works itself is, and I look into it and I just kind of like pulling my hair like, Jesus, uh, how, how do we move forward on this thing? Uh, because I'm still checking on the, uh, the infrastructure impact fee. Because the, the original design, uh, before they get the construction permit, they must assess the value and then pay a 2% out of that. But since then, there are change orders, and we wanted to find out who is responsible for the change order. Have they been submitted? Had it been recalculated? And the more I look into that law, there's also a section that says that IPI uh, is entitled to uh, infrastructure gaming credits. So if they put uh, 10 million to the septic sewer line, or 3 million to the, the roads, or whatever they put in, they're supposed to be entitled to the credits of the infrastructure. None of those are happening. So in order for CCC really to do a fair enforcement, we need to take a look at both sides, not just IPI. If these folks are entitled to those credits, then those departments that are scattered based on the law. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm nothing to do with the infrastructure, but I'm reaching out to say, hey, how, how, do, we, how do we do this together? You know? Uh, anyway, that's just our frustration. Thank you, Chair. Uh, let me recognize the uh, uh, director first before we move to Rep. Lee Pong. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Senator Sixtu did mention, you know, all these amendments with regards to the Lottery Commission, and, and you know, that's one of the, um, the, the reasons why the Commission wants oversight or uh, authority over the uh, CLA, because, you know, the Commission does, or the, we do know uh, the reality on the ground with the licensee. Um, and I would have to respectfully also disagree with the opinion of the task force. I believe that it is necessary to uh, ensure that we can cover all the gaps surrounding the oversight, uh, the regulatory oversight on our casino licensee. Thank you. Thank you, Director. And uh, the chair recognizes uh, Rep. Lee Pan Thank you, time. Mr. Chairman. I'll try to keep it short because I know you're watching your watch. <coughs> Chairman. Thank you for answering my question, even though it was indirectly uh, the way you responded. So let me follow up with this. Uh, why is IPI holding a license? And if this is, was in Vegas, let's just hypothetically put Vegas in the picture. How would the, the commissioner, uh, commission handle such, such violation? Would this, would a casino license still have a license? Or would that be suspended, revoked? Because looking at the Lottery Commission section 31, I'm reading on A, failure to pay any amount due and payable year under upon the date when such payment is due. That's telling me that if a vendor comes in and service was provided and payment is a year later, this should justify that this company's license should be suspended. I don't know why. 
vendors had provided the service. Now the vendor has to sit there and try to figure out how to pay the supplier that supply his company or her company the product that was procured by IPI. Now, I don't know if CCC incorporated this in their regulation, but those are, are grounds for suspension of license. There's no, neg no uh, negotiation on this. Numerous violation after a violation, violation, violation. You mentioned there's eight amendments to this casino license. I'm wondering if there's a nine, a 10, 11. What next? Do we continue amending this license? And if as the interim direct, acting director mentioned that if CCC was to assume this, how, what's the guarantee that they will comply with all this uh, uh, casino license agreement? So going back, how in the heck does IPI still hold a, hold a license with all this multiple violation? Thank you, um, Chairman and Rep. Lee Bond. Um, I believe with your reference to Section 31, and I have it in front of me, um, it does mention on uh, subsection A, failure to pay any amount due and payable here under upon the date when such payment is due. I believe, um, and I'm not an attorney, but uh, the interpretation would be anything within the license agreement, um, not necessarily vendors that are, are old, but if a payment, for example, the license fee wasn't paid, then that would constitute, you know, um, one of the, the uh, material breach events within the license. So just uh, so so we're only talking about the license, but the other inclusion in this section, such as the community chest fund, those are not part of this. Yes, it is. And then again, this is why the commission or myself, uh, we did file a, uh, a complaint with the commission with regards to, um, to similarly on this issue. In other words, the process has begun, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, on, on the enforcement. So, so let me ask, how long has they delayed the, the community chest fund? Um, how, how long? Let, let, let me, uh, um, because of the issue on section two of the agreement, that the enforcement entity on this license agreement shall be the governor for the terms and conditions of the agreement. This is non-gaming. So we've reached out to the governor and we say, uh, you gotta act on this one. And uh, we got the attorney general, assistant attorney general, or deputy attorney general that informs us that uh, Mr. Director at times says you have concurrent authority. So we've been meeting with that because of the concurrent nature of the responsibility. We have been moving on it, uh, uh, Chairman Lee. Uh, on the I'm, I'm kind of lost because you're saying that the governor is responsible, but section two, section two. But yeah. now the governor is saying to you, or the uh, assistant attorney general is telling concurrent. you that you have the concurrent authority. Yes. yes. If didn't, weren't you aware that you had that authority? Uh, we do, but we don't want to have a conflicting enforcement. This is one government. I mean, uh, you know, let's let's be realistic. This is a company, like I said, that already invested over $700 million. If you're going to pursue a suspension or revocation over, let's say, the 10 million or, or the 20 million, uh, I, I think we need to do it in a coordinated, uh, legal, and fair way. Uh, we don't just Mr. jump. Mr. Chairman, we're trying to, to make sure that everything is going smoothly. I hate to illustrate and set an example such as the Tinian dynasty where Finson came in and shut it down completely. Yeah, understand that. <laughs> go, go, what go is the pos possibility of Finson coming in here and say we're, we're shutting down IPI? Uh, go, go, going to your other issues and I'll raise that too. Uh, New Jersey and Nevada uh, who have multiple uh, gaming operators have come across numerous times where those gaming operators violated the regulations. They don't just go out and strip them of their license. Uh, we can provide you some of those violations. Uh, there is so-called you know, public interest, and that public interest becomes even more magnified here since we only have one casino. 
whereas in New Jersey or Nevada, they have multiple. They have really the the discretion of going out and, and wanking the license. So there's a process to do here. On the eight amendments that you made the, that you alluded to, the CNMI did not necessarily get the short end of the stick here. Every amendment, the IPI had to give concessions. And some of those concessions are the very issue that they are now claiming, whoops, we didn't realize that the community benefit fund was supposed to move up. They also have a concession there that they have to pay CHC $500,000. So every amendment that was requested by IPI that was entertained by the Lottery Commission, there was a concession made by IPI to, to uh, satisfy or secure the changes. On how do we assure future compliance? We have always emphasized at the Commission the culture of compliance. You and I have gone in on different uh, workshops and you have probably realized that we were interested not so much in a culture of uh, sanctions and punitive. We were interested in the culture of compliance. We tried our very best to reach out and show them how to do this correctly. Uh, on FinCEN, as I indicated, we have no direct authority to enforce Title 31. That's a federal law. We do, however, require them to comply with every federal and state and CNMI laws and regulations. If they violated FinCEN, which we're finding out because they, they audited IPI over a six month period by the IRS, uh, IRS submitted the report to FinCEN and FinCEN is now asking for further information. At the time that this was happening, CCC was a little bit more comfortable with the process because IPI recruited Mr. Kenneth Heinz, who was the lead IRS investigator on the Tinian case. They also hired Mr. Gregory Lisa, who was the prosecutor of FinCEN on the Tinian case, both acting as advisors to IPI to avoid the problem with, with uh, bank secrecy uh, violations. So we were comfortable seeing that, you know, Thank the Lord, there's somebody in there competent to do the, the regulations and the policies. What came out of there is a really significant improvement on the development of the appropriate policies and procedures. Unfortunately, some of the people who were trained are not there anymore. And the issues that FinCEN is looking is going back since they began the operations, since before all of the training. In fact, as a consequence, we require every employee of IPI before CCC issues a key employee or employee license, that they get a anti-money laundering certifications as a condition of your licensing. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you for that. <clears throat> My final question, Mr. Chairman, do we see IPI or that casino opening? And who's going to travel or when is the tentative date for that opening? If, if the governor does uh, lift the second color code to, to blue, uh, do we see? Uh, Chairman Lee, you, it, in the situation like we're experiencing now with COVID-19 pandemic, predicting the future is probably a very risky business. But I can tell you that if the health issues or if the vaccine comes up, someone had been talking about October or November, that would you know, at least begin to open up travel. Uh, without the border opening up, there's not a very good uh, expectation that we, we should expect any, any particular activity. But the good part of this, based on the first two or three years of operation at the gaming, where at that point in time we were, we were observing that 90 to 95 percent of the gaming revenue was coming from the VIP and the remaining 5 to 10 percent were from the mass tables. If we're worried about the COVID-19 pandemic, we're worried more about the mass. If we're thinking about the revenue, it was from the small handful of VIP. So perhaps if we can figure out a way to convince IPI to you know, revisit the VIP, smaller number of people, larger volume of economic activity. They, they have their own chartered plane, and you know that may be a, a small way to give you a little bit better uh, feeling about the future. Otherwise, we're as blind as you are in reference to what we're going to do with COVID-19 pandemic. Well, Mr. Chairman, you know, I still say that uh, to me, IPI will not be able to sustain completion of this project. I don't know where they're going to get their resources to pay up. Uh, this is this is very scary because since day one of the issues that they've gone through, 
continue to add on. And it has overwhelmed them that funding is going to be a critical issue on their part. And with this three months requirement that CCC is trying to impose on payroll, I hope that uh, it takes effect immediately and before any exhaustion of these three months that it is replenished, just like putting gas back to the tank because once they exhaust it, all the employees go, will be payless again. So you as the new chairman and the new incoming members have a daunting task of making sure that we don't need to come to this table again to continue asking the same question over and over and over again. So I highly recommend that work with us if you want our assistance because we can't work alone and expect things to be given out. So we would appreciate that if we ask for pertinent information, there shall, there shall not be an, any hold back because how can we understand what's going on if we're just being thrown around in circle? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, 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 I hear. Mr. Thank Chairman. you. Uh, let me. Let me. Let me. Let's. Uh, let's just just take note of uh, Chairman Lee's uh, recommendation and his concerns, uh, so we can uh, move on to our next um, uh, member. Just in the interest of time, uh, thank you. So I'm going to recognize right now uh, uh, Senator Hofschneider. I think, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon, everyone, um, members of the Game Commission, and um, the rest that are here. Um, and if I miss the presentation, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, forgive me, but I, I do want to ask: uh, Have you guys covered the details? And is it is it appropriate to share for public consumption on the issue with regards to the half a billion loan that IPI engaged that we saw in the paper a few months back? Yes. You kind of mentioned a little bit about about it, uh, and I was just trying to track down the uh, sequence of your statements. The 500 million loan that uh, IPI engaged with some certain entity. Is that, can you guide me along? Uh, is that part of the overall financial scheme to accomplish the remaining uh, portion of the IPR or the building that's currently under construction? That was one uh, financial document shown to the commission in response to our request to demonstrate their financial suitability. Okay, so uh, of the half a billion, uh, how much has been since been run down? To, to my knowledge, the 165 million has been drawn down from the 500 million. So that represents the, the figures that could potentially be addressing the needs for the construction, the vendor payments, salaries, and everything else that follows, right? Uh, my understanding that the, the current obligations for salaries and so forth is not coming necessarily from that loan facility. It's coming in from the parent company's own uh, financial. But what we were concerned more is complete the IPR, satisfy all your existing obligations on the casino license agreement. Right. So of the $700 million that was uh, tagged, pegged as the cost, the current cost and running, and considering the percentage of the completion of the building itself, do you have uh, any information as to how much more do they need to finish that? There, there are some rough estimates since the Korean firms were involved in reassessing all the project. And I believe if um, maybe IPI can correct me, but they're looking at probably no more than 200 million before it's completely wrapped up, which will bring the facility closer to a billion dollars. Uh, I might also add, uh, Senator, that it really would be nice if both committees take the time and we go down and you visually see what's going on. Because we have regular meetings with Ernest and Young, at least we do at least once uh, before they do the final audit, we, we meet at least once a year. Uh, and I asked Ernest and Young, this is prior to COVID-19, 
what do they think? Because they audit both the, the parent company and the CNMI uh, company. And when you ask them, what, what do you think about this project? What do you think about this uh, organization? And the lead the auditor from Hong Kong was saying that based on his observation, he was very impressed because they also audit other casinos, other constructions, other projects. They said they've been impressed to see how IPI continuing to finish this, these beautiful projects. So I think, like I said, be, before we all uh, over discuss the issue of how far this project is going, I, I would request that maybe both houses of the, take the time and go see the actual construction. And if nothing else, maybe you can also get a chance to see where the proposed internment, reinterment of the archaeological findings, so, so you have a, a good idea on what's going on. And that's the reason why I'm asking yeah. the question, because I'm leading to your, your recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm just listening to the exchanges. Uh, you certainly have a lot of, uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, work ahead of us. Uh, and to the point that was earlier made by uh, Mr. Uh, Representative Lee Pon, as far as the resumption of operations and your to your point about it's hard to predict, um, and then you followed through with the the um, primary or premium players um, with with the current, and we need to be concerned because that's our target market with the current civil unrest in one of the major markets that are coming in uh, to to uh, facilitate or to operate or to play or to gamble uh, to produce the funds or the revenue that is that could potentially be helping us here in the in the, in the region um, have you guys discussed that with the licensee as far as how they're going to I know it's a huge there's a lot of people but there's also what you call a uh, uh, geopolitical war uh, between the United States and, and ROC. And in, it's the gap is, 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 you know, farther. So what are the contingencies, if that, or what kind of assurance can you give this committee as far as that particular discussion itself, if it's being discussed already? And if it's not, then you can just say yes or no. Thank you, uh, Senator. Um, you know, that is definitely one of the uh, Commission's uh, primary concerns is, you know, with given the uh, U.S. and uh, China's uh, relationship, um, it's deteriorating, as you mentioned. And uh, the Trump administration, I believe, uh, has uh, put a ban out uh, to ban Chinese flights from uh, um, coming to U.S. airports. And, you know, I'm not adverse in U.S. Uh, flight authority, but I, I believe, I assume that, you know, we can't get flights from China based on this, this ban. Um, and you know, IPI's primary source market is mainland China. I mean, they're Chinese patrons. Um, that is our co a concern for of us, and we are, you know, going to be discussing that um, uh, going forward. Um, and I, uh, another thing I wanted to, to sort of share, I know uh, Rep. Lee Pond is not here, but it's, and it's not to defend IPI, but it's to recognize facts that have occurred. Uh, um, and as you are aware, you know, there are many outside forces that have affected our licensee, and to, to include uh, China's capital flight restrictions, uh, Macau's ban on cross-border settlements, the super typhoons, labor issues, infrastructure issues, and now this whole COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and, you know, when we're going through the audit of financial statements, you know, we, we this is, again, this is all in the audit of financial statements. I'm not trying to defend IPI, but um, we, have to they're, they're, we have to recognize that IPI has contributed over $700 million in capital investments, and, to, and that does not include the taxes and government um, uh, fees that it's, it's paid. But at the same time, if you look at, again, the audit of financial statements, IPI has not seen a dollar of return from the CMI from all of its uh, investments since they first started here in the CMI. So that's just uh, something I, I wanted to share with you guys. Well, thanks. Thank you. And uh, I, again, uh, I, I don't want to belabor the discussion, but I, um, you know, we, I think the, the, this is um, understood that there's a, actually the value of this meeting is for us to get uh, closer to some of the questions. And, and to your point earlier about uh, your advocating repealing or maybe doing an oversight of um, or have the CCC or take over the license, the casino license agreement or the lottery commission. Uh, that's something that uh, I'm interested to hear further. Uh, how would that turn um, 
you know, improve the the climate or the progression of executing what is in the books uh, today. Um, so, what is is there an issue with the remaining um, the remaining funds to draw down on the hundred and on the five hundred million? Do you guys know? We don't know the uh, updated specific details since COVID nineteen. We're also awaiting the appointment of uh, IPI's new CEO to be on island before we can discuss. Uh, I understand based on our discussion with uh, Madam Chair that uh, because of COVID-19, there, there's things may have, some something may have changed. So we're waiting to hear what those changes are. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I, you know, I, I'll just yield and I'll um, reserve my time for next time. Mrs. Mossy, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator. Uh, the floor recognizes uh, Rep. Probes, uh, and I believe this will be, the, uh, will be the second to the last question before we bring in. Rep. Probes, are you online? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I, uh, thank you, Chairman. I was not sure if I was, I, I didn't hear that part. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, um, before I ask my question, I just wanted to make a comment earlier because I, I thought I heard uh, Senator 62 mention about the uh, obligation bond or completion bond. I, I do want to point out that um, while we do everything we can to, to try to salvage the casino industry here in our islands, we also have an obligation to tell the people what really went down and all the other things that have cause some of these problems. It's not just coronavirus and typhoons and other things, but it's really some poor, horrible decision making that has been made. So I wanted to just state that for the record, because sometimes the CCC gets blamed and is told, well, you guys didn't, uh, you know, ensure that their completion bond was put in. And I just want to remind the general public that, in fact, House Bill 1995 had language uh, in the bill itself that would have allowed on page 12, before it was, um, there was a substitute bill put in and, and replaced, this would have definitely given the Casino Commission the authority to, uh, to issue the uh, completion bonds, you know, and to require it. So it is very sad that this was taken out without any explanation to the public other than some excuses that it would cost too much without even having this conversation. So I apologize to the Commonwealth Casino Commission for stripping you of something that you should have the authority to the chairman and acting director. I apologize on behalf of the 19th legislature when this horrible decision was made. I apologize to you, sirs, and to your CCC team. Now, uh, my next question uh, would be, sorry, that was just a comment, but my question, Chairman, Chairman uh, uh, Ralph Yomo and Chairman Senator Vinny Sablon, I would like to ask if we could invite IPI to uh, answer some questions about the Community Benefit Fund, if they would be willing to do so. Are you yielding? Uh, are you yielding, uh, Rep. Probes? <laughs> uh, we are. After I, I believe Senator Vinny will be the last uh, question, uh, request for question, and then we go into uh, IPI. I'm sorry, I I, I could not hear that. Uh, Senator Vinny will be the last. Uh, in the uh, are you asking? Uh, okay, uh, Chairman Cruz, and two more questions, and then we go into committee as a whole uh, and request, okay. yeah. Okay, so in that case, can I, can I, uh, uh, so, so we will do that then, is that correct? Yes, thank Chairman? you for yielding. Uh, I'll recognize Senator Cruz thank first, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, it's not a question, but uh, I believe it's not appropriate to put the IPA and, and the Gaming Commission in, into this agenda. I think it's most appropriate that because the Commission or regulatory body, and it is appropriate that we, we separate them, and we, we I, I request that we invite them on a, on a separate. Uh, okay, let uh, me let me get a short recess uh, because I believe. 
the chairman said it was okay. Uh, I'll ask our members, I guess you ask your members uh, if it's allowable. No? And I will get a council in. Short recess. Okay, members, uh, please proceed to the chamber.
Okay, members, let, uh, let's begin. Okay, members, we are back. Is the chairman in? Okay, um, Mr. Executive Director, uh, is IPI ready to proceed? Uh, my understanding is they're here to answer questions. I believe they were, but it looks like they stepped outside. So maybe I can go and pull them in. Yeah. Thank you. excuse us uh, is IPA ready to proceed okay uh, with that I'll excuse CCC so we can invite in uh, uh, IPI or representative from IPI thank you Um, before I excuse you, um, if IPI is not going to speak, then we're going to wrap up with CCC. Right now we're excusing CCC from taking part of the, if, if IPI chooses to speak. Mr. Chairman, my understanding is that IPI will not be speaking, and they said if you want to, we can issue your committee can issue directly to IPI, and they will come and appear. But they were just here because yesterday when they were not providing me clear answers, I sort of spontaneously say you come and explain. But now they realize the magnitude of the questioning. That I think they needed the authority now from the corporate to to give them. So that's that's what I heard from them. Um, let the record show that the uh, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, CCC informed the members that they are here and prepared to speak. But uh, after deliberating for a couple of, a couple of hours, uh, they decided that uh, it would be best not to. And with that, we will go back and. Finish up the questionings with the CCC um, 
uh, chairman and uh, uh, with that I'll recognize um, Senator Vinny. Thank you Chairman Yumo. Uh, well, the director is not in the, in the in the room but we have the chairman. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask um, a question in regards to the 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 actual CCC and its operations um, and its finances um, within, I know on public law 19-24, um, on subsection 2309, the Commonwealth Casino Commission Regulatory Fee Fund. Um, can you touch on that, Chairman? I know you mentioned, uh, you know, it was mentioned all, all day or all afternoon that, um, you know, we should anticipate the inactivity of, uh, um, um, you know, the, the players and, and, and tourists and stuff like that. How, um, how is your 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 fina internal finances to operate the 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 commission? Um, uh, what is the what is the state of of the the regulatory fee fund? Is that used for the operations and payment of the salaries of your your employees? And um, you know, have you laid off anyone? Or what, what is what is the state of the commission now? Uh, uh, knowing that you know there is no. Um, you know, it was it was mentioned today that the licensee is is having a little trouble paying um, stuff out. So, is this one of the payouts that are that they're having trouble with, and um, how is it affecting the uh, the commission within? And I'm just I'm just asking this because I'm kind of I want to I'm kind of concerned um, of of your employees, and you know, we want to ensure that their um, you know their well being is 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 okay. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can provide you guys the information that I shared with the uh, commission at our last uh, commission meeting, and that is um, for the budget update for the commission uh, for the month of April. Uh, the commission had a total expenditure of around $183,465, and around 92% of that expenditure was attributed to personal costs and board compensation. 5% uh, was attributed to office rental, and the remaining 3% was attributed to various utilities and supplies uh, expenses. The, um, with the Commission's remaining available balance of around $1.38 uh, uh, million, we estimated that that should get us to, at the very latest, uh, November of this year, should we not, you know, receive the regulatory fee. Um, we would have had, you know, more than enough uh, for another year. However, due to the uh, unfortunate circumstance of uh, COVID-19 that has reached, you know, the CNMI, uh, we understand that the governor had to, um, uh, under his executive order, uh, uh, pull about $2 million from our funds to respond to the uh, COVID-19. Um, so, you know, with, with respect to, to our, uh, our budget, the commission has, um, what is it, uh, we have discussed amongst management and, and felt that uh, due to, you know, our, our circumstance of the $2 million being uh, um, pulled and uh, the casino lice, uh, the, our casino being closed, um, we uh, made a recommendation to uh, the, the governor as uh, um, pursuant to his directive whereby any modifications to the 64 hour work, uh, work schedule would have to be approved by his office that we reduce the commission's um, uh, staff hours from a 64 hour down to a 40 hour um, uh, work uh, schedule. So that's something that we've, um, you know, we're, we're uh, expecting possibly an approval on and we can implement. Um, and then at the same time, you know, we are revisiting our contracts with uh, utilities. Um, we have uh, an office down at the uh, casino and given that it's closed, you know, we're reconsidering the, the uh, 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 internet with um, our vendor as well as uh, cell phone plans and whatnot so we are trying to take uh, additional measures to to save the, the the resources that we have thank you if we do not receive the three million hundred fifty thousand on October 1st uh, we would have to um, figure out how to survive um, either strip them down to bare bones or obviously come before the legislature. Uh, we've even asked the governor that if you, if and when you receive federal aid uh, for these purposes, if we could get some kind of reimbursement or at least half of it or somewhere along the line. As you all know, we get $1 from the general fund. All of these are casino regulatory fee. Uh, so yes, uh, one vacant, we cannot refill the positions. No one gets promotion. Even the acting director cannot get the uh, promotion because of that ex executive or the directive. So we're we're on uh, no travels. Uh, our office supplies is bare minimum. 
everything is bare minimum right now. Uh, so as, like I said, as we speak, we were on 64 hour for quite a while, but the 20 hour work week, 40 hour uh, pay period uh, is about to kick in for, for all the staff and the managers. Uh, and then again, everybody's suffering, including CCC. Thank you, Director and Chairman. Uh, I just thought I'd ask that um, it's very vital that um, you know we know the um, operational and financial state of the the commission itself because there are orders that um, you are, are are regulating and and it's it's significant that um, you know you have those bodies there um, because there's just no. I mean, it doesn't make sense anymore if we're just gonna, you know, close out and then what happens to the orders or or, or what the uh, the licensee. Um, has to do so um, I, I just wanted to make sure that that's on record so the governor did um, uh, uh, I'm gonna say borrow or, or did take the two million away from uh, CCC um, to use for uh, COVID-19 operations and uh, when it begun uh, you're saying now that you're you can sustain yourselves with what you have in the bank for until November um, in anticipation that you you'll get another uh, round of this uh, regulatory fee fund to continue your operations is that's correct no or get appropriations from the legislature and that's why I, that's that's again why I ask because you know you do get that dollar right and it's 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 like I said it's vital and and and, and uh, chairman you said in your words we should not expect any activity so when there's no activity there's nothing coming in and when there's nothing coming in, you cannot get your regulatory fee fund. And when you don't get your regulatory fee fund, you cannot operate, your operations are crippled. And when your operations are crippled, nobody's watching the licensee. So that was what I, I, I was alluding to, and I wanted to make sure that that is on record. So um, that's something that we got to pay very, very close attention to. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Um, for the final round, I want to wrap this uh, committee meeting uh, session up. The next couple of minutes, so uh, I ask any of the member, non-member, get recognized for the last time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I have a question about uh, who the decision makers are, Mr. Chairman Guerrero. Mr. Sue, you earlier represented to us, had described himself as uh, an investor with IPI and a friend of the family uh, and who's assisting in management. But, and, and that he was here on the authority, the authority of the chairwoman to represent the company. But just now, when I spoke to him during recess, he said he is not an investor with IPI. He is a friend of the family and he is not authorized to represent the company. And so you know, we keep coming back to this. This has been an ongoing issue at the CCC meetings. It's really com completely confusing about who exactly is calling the shots at IPI. And, and what are, who, who are they? What exactly are their roles? Uh, at, at last week's commission meeting, IPI representatives, the employees, indicated that they are going through this process of reorganization. What exactly is the purpose of that reorganization? What role is CCC playing in reviewing or approving that plan? And again, at the end of the day, who is in charge? In reference to the gentleman who calls himself Mr. Sue, I, I only saw him on Wednesday. Uh, initially, I did not want to allow him to participate in the discussion in that uh, meeting, uh, but it, and I asked uh, attorney Mike Dutz, uh, who is the gentleman and why should he be sitting in on this, and there's the, he spoke on behalf and on the authority of Madam Ch the Chair Lady. The Chair Lady says, yes, I'd, I'd like for him to speak uh, on behalf of her and the company. As he began to elaborate we realized that this gentleman knows a lot more than the previous CEO and previous CFO. So in the interest of knowing what's going on, we sat and allow him to explain a little bit more. Um, but he is not a member of IPI, but based on his explanation, he's a very close friend to the IPI owners. And my understanding is that his major investment here, the owner himself, the IPI owner himself, 
has also invested in his project here. So I, I don't know anything about that project. We did not discuss his project, but he was providing us some very useful information. We found out from him that, as an example, he was the person who introduced the owner to the Japanese facility that made 500 million available. So we, we began to see that all we were in CCC need is some legitimate information coming from the company. And I believe they still want to come in and speak to you. They just wanted to consult with the company. So whatever they tell the, the legislature that it would be sanctioned by, by the company. Uh, and I, I hope I did not mislead you because at the time that I said that she was, I was authorized, it was that during our meeting that the chairman, the chair lady authorized, but I did not hear the chair lady authorizing him to come up today and speak up here. I see. I did not hear that. So he, he is the gentleman who is responsible for introducing the company to this institution that offered a $500 million loan, but I, I guess what I'm trying to wrap my, my mind around is if IPI has access to a $500 million loan, why can't they pay any of their obligations in a timely manner, whether it's taxes, the community benefit fund, payroll, CUC, IT&E just got disconnected. Um, and, and, you know, and, and also on the subject of Mr. Sue, I, I'm really puzzled um, about the role that he plays because he, he's, we have heard, I, I don't know, maybe some of my other colleagues here have received complaints from contractors and vendors who say that he is actually overseeing, taking a much more active role than just being a friend to this company and making decisions, calling, calling the shots at the construction site, also blocking vendor payments. And so I, I don't know what you would do to really get to the bottom of who is in charge, who is making decisions, but it just seems like like this, this just cannot continue. Um, we need answers from IPI, and it's really not clear who we should even ask. I, I, I agree, and uh, I, I don't. I cannot speak for Mr. Su. Uh, like I said, I only met him uh, Wednesday, but from what I gathered during the discussion, he has invested significant money in, on the Saipan projects, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is the new owner of Plumeria, and uh, the uh, Fiesta, Fiesta, La Fiesta. Uh, the former mall in San Roque, mm -hmm. and I believe some of the projects behind. So, and again, we heard from him that he's a close uh, friend of the family, and I figured at this point in time, uh, if someone knows something that that we wanted to hear, and it was a private meeting anyway, it wasn't a public meeting that we have at CCC. Mm -hmm. But what from what I heard, I, I was a little bit more at ease, knowing that they are cognizant of the 15.5 million regulatory, I mean uh, the annual license fee and the regulatory fee, they're aware of it, and they're preparing to make payments of those. So uh, whatever okay. he said, that he's the one who who actually introduced IPI, I don't know the authenticity of that. He's the one that told us that, that he got involved. So, But but we never checked whether or not he was true, or does it really wouldn't matter for, from our perspective. Thank you. Um, my, my next question, Mr. Chairman, uh, I have really two questions, one about construction and one about labor issues. Every CCC meeting includes updates from IPI on the progress of construction. And it is my understanding that a great deal of the work actually has failed inspection and was covered up before repairs could be made or before reinspections could be done. There are issues with uh, structural welded beams that were installed improperly, uh, an exterior wall system that is not waterproof, structural supports that are rusting, deficiencies in the wiring and in the fire safety systems. The structure has also been open uh, to the elements for the last two years. And my question for the commission, I, I know that you're not DPW, uh, but you do receive these updates and you do work with DPW and you could, you don't need legislative authority to form an enforcement task force right now. But what, what proof does the commission have that this structure is even still safe? and that the rust and the deterioration have not impacted this building such that we, we, this, this may just all be for nothing. Uh, um, I, again, um, 
this issue I think would be best if we take some time and you actually visually go down because construction never really stopped. It's continuing up until now. Construction is continuing. But my question was, were, do you have evidence that the deficiencies that were identified during inspection, the, yes, that they uh, have been corrected? Yes, the, the deficiencies actually occurred not recently but much earlier in, in, the, in the process where DPAC was making references to uh, the welding of the columns, the cement and so forth. At the time, it was Aquino uh, Consulting Services uh, that was doing the structural checks for the, uh, st the structural integrity of the. This is the first superstructure of its nature. So we took everything that at that time we heard from the DPAC on the so called alleged deficiencies. And we had the Aquino uh, structural engineering firm with their staff appeared in the meeting and we went through every step of those deficiencies and they clarified. They were saying those are incorrect assumptions. The actual inspector that did it uh, sat and, and informed us. Uh, as an example would be even on the PSI of the cement, it required like uh, 5,000 PSI. Most of it are like 7,500 PSI. They require a certain size of the rebar. What they put in is larger. It's almost like overkill. And this is from uh, uh, Kino uh, Engineering. And so they, they went into every, the, the welding that it says that's incorrect. Those uh, columns fit it. So not after they fit it, that's when they initially weld and then they screw it up with specific torque. And each of those columns have a torque that's, that's written on the column. Uh, we asked the DPAC at that time, that how, how do you know that? Were you there? And I said, no, I wasn't there. And the uh, Aquino Engineering was saying, sir, we're there. They cannot proceed without us signing off on the safety of these columns. So at that point in time, the allegations that he was leaning was, was uh, according to Aquino, was incorrect. The columns the being welded rather than, than bolted, again, was, was also uh, not correct from the part of the complainer, uh, IPI. And according to Aquino, who was the primary uh, structural engineers, the building uh, is uh, over, overbuilt. I mean, they, they went over what was required on the minimum. We discussed a little bit about Hawaiian rock and how the cement uh, was done, and they, I, I knew a lot about cement after they explained that the moment they, they leave Hawaiian rock, it's temperature rated, there's chemical put in there, and that temperature upon arrival, uh, the engineers have to determine the temperature of the cement before it's poured. So there was a lot of process that they meticulously went through to explain to the commission why that building uh, is safe and, and not unsafe as it was claimed by some of the community members. I would like to add that the commission does not certify the safety of buildings and we would re rely on the expertise of the Department of Public Works. Ultimately, Public Works is the inspector, and like I said, we've been we we worked with. I mean, we went and visited them prior to giving the green light to open the facility because we wanted to make sure that the IPR, that's the facility, is actually safe. And we went through a walkthrough with uh, building code people before we authorized them to to utilize the facility. Thank you, sure. Chairman. And uh, understood. If I may ask my last question. We are running out of time, Rep. I think uh, the. The commissioners welcome a continued uh, <laughs> questions. Last question, I promise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I and I, I do appreciate what you've said, Mr. Uh, Chair Chairman Guerrero. Uh, I, I I will note though that the condition of compliance with the license includes compliance with all the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth. And, and so even though you are not DPW, you do have a role to play in ensuring that, that this structure is safe in compliance with regulations and laws of the Commonwealth. Um, so, but, but moving on to the question of labor, because you also receive regular updates on labor at the casino commission meetings. And um, IPI has, the, the construction site has been, uh, it is now the subject of a, a lawsuit that alleges worker injuries that uh, were not compensated for, as well as IPI's involvement in a human trafficking and forced labor scheme. And they are now at risk of defaulting in that lawsuit. Uh, are, is, is the CCC aware that if IPI is found to have engaged in trafficking and forced labor, that they may be banned from the CW program? And further, is the commission aware that that this, you, you mentioned this federal consent judgment that um, in, in which
which IPI is obligated to pay wages that are owed millions of dollars going back several years. Uh, but that, uh, my understanding, according to information from the Congressional Office, is that IPI has not paid a penny on that judgment to these workers. And so uh, these, these issues also go to IPI's ability to continue accessing labor in the future. And is this something that you are aware of? Is this a, are these questions that you've asked IPI? Um, how, how will they address their labor shortages if they can't access the CW program and, and if they continue to violate federal labor laws? Some of those cases that you cited are actually current litigation, so I, I cannot really make comments on those, um, including the, the trafficking, I believe, is still uh, in the courts. Um, but this becomes a little bit more complicated in the absence of the CEO at IPI. We've expressed our concern, that, uh, and, I, and I pin them down regarding how do you get H2B when you have pending, pending issues. I don't know how Homeland Security will grant you that. Who certified your CW that you don't have any? So we, we have, we've addressed this, and like I said, we, we've worked with uh, uh, Berta, who resigned, and then we worked with Maggie Atta, who is no longer there, now it's with Reedy. So we're trying to work with them to, to see uh, your concerns and then to make sure that they are properly addressed. But uh, again, this is also an issue, this is one of those federal uh, Federal law, they're the ones that decide who gets CW and who gets H2B. We, we play very little role, none, no role at all. With the exception of the uh, construction workers, we do, not, we do not license them, but we register them. Uh, and as a, a part of the process of the registration is that if you're an H2, we want to see your work permit. If you don't have a work permit, we will not register you. If you do have the uh, appropriate work permit, and we'll put a sticker onto your work stuff that you are registered with us. But really, these are, the, like you said, federal laws, and I, I, we, we don't have as much as we would like to, and we remind IPI about the necessity for them to comply with federal law. If they were found later on that they are continuing uh, to violate and the final federal resolution is issued out, CCC can use those final adjustments as uh, evidence for further sanctions above and beyond whatever the federal government issues. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, Rep. Uh, Sablon. Uh, for the last, uh, Rep. Lee will be last. Yeah. Just a question to the chairman. Uh, I hear the name Shu or Chu? I believe it's Sue. And, and with and, and I'm this trying is to get our staff to find out who is this person. The first time I saw it was Wednesday. And this is the guy that bought uh, La Fiesta and Plomeria? Uh, 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 yeah, it's a, it's a rumor. We, we haven't seen uh, Chama. Because uh, I've heard the name. Uh, the main reason yeah. I'm, I wanted to ask because yeah. I heard the name that uh, this guy uh, is a resident of. Australia. Yeah, he's been in Australia for over 30 years, he claimed, and he's been doing construction above that period. He's got a 30-year construction. He's familiar with construction, and he's helping the owners complete the project. He is trying to impress the commission to separate the construction from the gaming. And what we're impressing to them is that the integrated resort license is one license. Whoever the CEO must be responsible for both construction and gaming, because most of their Violations is having to do with construction and labor. Perhaps on phase one and phase two, we may want to revisit that because we've authorized them to work with other investors, like for, for example, just for example, the Four Seasons or Seraton. So if Four Seasons was doing their own hotel, I can see how IPI management can take a lower uh, direct involvement with construction because Seraton would have their own requirements. Mr. Chairman, I highly recommend that you do a background check because uh, we have, I, I we, heard that we have he has vested interest in, in, in IPI. So He has an investment. He, he bought some shares in IPI, but so significantly small percentage. Thank Anyone you. who gets more than 10%, we, we give a deeper look, but he has much, much less than that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, thank you, Rep. Uh, Lee. Um, so in closing, um, I guess the committee would like this uh, to continue, uh, and our arms is basically 1856, and and that subsection 2314, that you know any investigation monitor or monitoring 
and other means so that's kind of opens up to all kinds of uh, uh, I guess uh, checks um, and and to respond to the legislature so that we're abreast with what's going on with the uh, loan licensee and um, with that uh, chair I uh, is there any closing we haven't heard from uh, your vice chairs the author uh, no comment sorry no uh, good afternoon no mr. Uh, chairman and me members of this body uh, <clears throat> as we go through this exercise I was noting a lot of issues a lot of questions and concerns uh, I do understand because uh, being a former member of this body, I know the frustration. <clears throat> uh, I know the frustration on, especially on trying to get you know, information. Uh, we are also at times frustrated, but because of some you new know, uh, uh, laws that we are governed not to, uh, and for that reason, that is why you know, uh, at times it is difficult for us to to, to provide us info. But nevertheless, no, Mr. Chairman and members, no, uh, <clears throat> uh, today's uh, exercise, no, uh, we as regulators also would really appreciate, no, 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 as we continue to regulate the industry, we also appreciate that uh, we also seek advice from, from the members' uh, recommendations so that we can uh, continue to also make sure that, uh, uh, also make sure that uh, we as regulators continue to, to make sure that the company are in compliance. Uh, <clears throat> with that, Mr. Chairman, no, uh, we look forward to a continued dialogue, uh, not just with the legislators, but also no, uh, <clears throat> getting together other stakeholders, not because to form a task force, but barely to, uh, to put our heads together and see uh, how we best approach the, the, the issues. So with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you for, for today's uh, uh, meeting, and we look forward to a continued no, dialogue with the legislature. Thank you, Chairman, uh, uh, Vice Chair Dimapan. Uh, Chairman, your last word. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, also want to thank both the House and the Senate uh, Committee on Gaming. Uh, th this is uh, a good exercise to have both houses uh, present during this meeting. Um, the CCC can only do what the law authorizes it to do. We have looked at that provision, Mr. Chairman, that you cited, and we have exercised it in the last few years when we sanctioned IPI. Um, but I think we have a pending bill before the House that has gone from the House to the Senate back to the House a couple of times, but it's now back to the House that I'm asking uh, the honorable members here to uh, assist the Commission. To, uh, we are, as I say, where the rubber meets the road. Uh, you created the Commission to be the regulatory body. We saw where the necessary changes need to be made. We suggested that to the legislature. We asked you for your uh, wisdom in looking at that and understanding that we're trying to improve the regulatory uh, capability of uh, the CCC to make sure that it, it does its job as required by, by the law. Uh, so I, I urge every member of the, the House of Representatives to please uh, re revisit the uh, current bill that's already gone to the Senate. The Senate made some good changes. The CCC uh, appreciates those changes and is in full support of what the Senate have made. Uh, and we're asking to, to please, it's now the it's on the House's uh, court and we ask for, for your assistance in looking at that, and and we move forward. Uh, if you are making any other changes, I suggest that maybe we address that on a separate issue. So this is a bill that's been going back and forth for the last four years. Uh, there are some critical issues in there that, that I think would be would empower us to, to better enforce this thing. We're not magicians. Uh, we invest a significant amount of time in getting the right people in the right places to enforce this. We seek out and we continue to seek out to your advice and, and your guidance. Uh, if you see anything that you think we should do, we appreciate hearing it. Uh, and I really appreciate hearing from Congressman Ed Probst, uh, recognizing that we really don't have much authority on that. And, and I appreciate, uh, I understand that the openness and criticism, we, we should all hear it and take it to, to heart. But uh, 
we're looking too for solutions. So if you have any good solutions on how we can go forward. The CNMA government uh, is facing an unprecedented challenge with COVID-19. This is a global issue. We have an investor that have put in over a billion dollars now, and I'm not speaking for them. But we, for a long time, the Commonwealth government has even created the foreign investment section of the Department of Commerce. Now we have a foreign investor here that's already put in 700 million or so in Yarapan. So I, I say that it's easy for us to go in there and just wank the license. But what do we have? What options do we have when they're trying their best to make this work? So I say that it's, it's prudent, it is in the best interest of the public that we see what we can do to make this successful. And together, we, we force the company to comply with the agreements and move forward. And after all, look at the bigger picture. It's supposed to assist us in diversifying our economy. It will assist us in creating uh, job opportunities, good job opportunities. Uh, you know, there's so many supposedly good part of this gaming bill. So, well, like I said, we're not the magicians, and I understand the legislature is not the magician, and neither is the executive office. But together, I think we can put the minds and see how we can make this work. And and I reach out to you for your patience, your guidance, and, and your assistance as we move forward in continuing our duties and responsibilities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I still encourage that we set a time to go see the facility so you can see that it's still continuing. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'll do take you up on that offer. Uh, we'll wait for your guidance uh, with regards to inviting members of the gaming in both House and, and Senate. Uh, we'll wait for that invitation. And with that, uh, members, can I get a motion to adjourn? We'll move all the way down to adjournment. Thank you. Is there any objection? No objection. Okay. Thank you, members.